Hey everybody, James with Love My Pups, My Breeder Supply. I get, literally every day, I get questions about progesterone um, tests and what they mean and when to start your first test and based on that, when to do your next test. And there's no simple answer to this, so I'm just going to go through the whole thing. So, progesterone is probably the most reliable way of timing your breeding. Why does this matter? Because the window of opportunity to breed a dog is basically plus or minus either side of the correct day, which is two days after ovulation or progesterone level of 15. And if you get that wrong, then you're going to impact your litter size. You're either going to get small litters or you're going to get no pregnancy at all. So obviously it's very important. So there's a number of ways that you can go get a progesterone test done. One of the ways that I've been talking about for years is to use uh, the target test, target, target test, and you can get that at targetvet.com, and that test there is www.targetvet.com. I've been using that for years successfully. Um, it's inexpensive, it's 145 bucks for 12 tests, so it's about $12 a test. That's including shipping. It's a little white cylinder, you have to draw blood, you have to spin the blood to get the plasma, you follow the directions and 15 minutes later, you get, or 10 minutes later, you get the test results based on the color of a little white cylinder. Blue meaning not ready, lighter blue meaning getting close, white meaning time to start breeding. And um, there's not, that, that's fine. Uh, these days, I actually, uh, I'm, I'm now actually selling machines called Fine Care from Wonderfoe. Uh, it's a $2,800 machine, and I swear by this machine. It is definitely more accurate, and there's some reasons that maybe it's worth investing in the machine itself, depending on how much this you're doing. Or you can go to your vet, but what we want to do is we want to get a progesterone result, because this is the thing we're talking about, progesterone. We want to get a progesterone result, and what we're looking for is we want to breed on a, on a, a natural breeding or on a AI, a vaginal AI, on 15 nanograms per milliliter. And this is important, what the units are that's being measured is very important. If you're in Europe, then we measure in moles per milliliter. And typically, that number is about three times higher. We'd be doing it on about a 45. So it's very important that when you ask what the results are, that you make sure that you are getting it in. If you're in the USA, make sure that you are getting this in nanograms per milliliter. Because if you get it wrong, you'll think you're way past the mark or you're breathed way too early and you're not going to get the, the right results. So this is very important. And by the way, what we're talking about physically about the results that you get, there's also a difference in machines. Most of the machines that you see are IDEX machines. And that is the gold standard. Um, the other one that you see is Mini Vidas. Mini Vidas. And the numbers for Mini Vidas are substantially higher than they are for IDEX. So be careful on that one too, because these numbers are something in the order of twice as high, times two. So where you'd be breeding on a 15 on an IDEX is actually about a 28 on a Mini Vidas. It's about twice as high. Um, so this is important to ask what the machine is too, because this can trip you up. Okay, but regardless of that, let's just talk about progesterone levels now, about what, what we're doing here. Um, so we've got a progesterone number. When do we do our first test? So this can be expensive. I mean, you know, the cost of getting a progesterone test at your vet is something between a low end of 50 bucks and a high end of about 180 bucks. There's a pretty good span here. And if you're gonna do, you know, three tests, four tests to find out when your dog's ready at 180 bucks, you know, you're spending $700 worth of testing. It can get expensive. Um, so, <clears throat> Um, when do you get your first test done? Well, let's just talk about the whole process. I've drawn this graph many times, and we're gonna do it again now. So this is progesterone level on the right side, and this is in nanograms per milliliter, like we discussed. And we're gonna go up to a level of 30 up here. And so there's zero, and so there's 15, which is what we're breeding on. There's 10, and there's five. Now give us some reference. This is number of days. 
So Dave, this is first drops of blood. First blood on the ground. This is the first point that you realize that your dog is in heat. It's not swelling up, it's not behavioral changes. It is when you see first drops of blood. See some on the panties if she's wearing those, on her bedding, drops on the ground. First drops of blood, day one. That's the beginning of the whole process. So that's day one. Um, and if you, you know, you can have silent heats where a dog doesn't show much color at all, or maybe is even being licked on and cleaned up by other dogs and so you don't see it. You can always take a Q-tip and stick a Q-tip up in a vulva an inch and get that back out and look at the Q-tip and that'll give you an idea about what's going on with color. All right, so this is first blood. When should you do your first progesterone test? Well, let's just talk about how this whole thing goes. Most dogs are bred between day 11 and day 13. That's a typical dog. That's a typical dog. Doesn't mean that it's your dog, and it doesn't mean that you can just summarily decide, oh look, here's first blood, we're gonna, we're gonna breed on day 11 or 13. If you do that, you'd probably be successful 70% of the time. We'd like you to be more successful on that. So that's why we do the progesterone test. So for the first five days, this level is less than one. It goes ver very slowly. For the first five days, this level that you'll get back is less than one and is not particularly meaningful. I recommend that you do the first test around day six. And what happens is, is we're just going to draw little points on the graph here. The graph starts to do that. There's, there's a kind of a point where things start to happen. And basically around day five, it goes up about one point a day until it gets to a level of five. This is a level of five right here. And then it goes up pretty rapidly after that. So this is... This is a level of five, that's a five, and that we're calling that ovulation. So that is the point the dog's ovulating, if it's a normal dog. So I recommend you get your first test done about day six, and the level at day six is gonna be something around, you know, between a one and a two. That's what you're gonna see on day six. If you get a number that's sub one, you spend money get doing a test done that's not particularly meaningful. So that's why I constantly come into, come into contact with people who may be getting advice from me or they're gonna use one of my stud dogs. By the way, we have 22 of them. So if you've got a Frenchie, we might be your people. Anyway, they get their first test done, they see first blood, they go to the vet the next day, the vet runs a test and it's, and it's like a point two. It's, it's a waste of money. You just wasted your money. There's no point getting a test done until you're at least six days into this. So save your money up, let's get the test done at the back end, don't get them at the front end, let's get some meaningful numbers. So what I'm saying is, is about day six, day six to day seven, first test, that's your first test. That's the, the first test you get. And remember, you've also got to pay attention to that lots of these places, at least 70% of vets can't do an in-house test. And you won't get the results until the next day. So if you go in on a Saturday and get a test done, you're probably not gonna get the results until Monday. If they've gotta send the test off and you go in on a Friday, the test lab might not be open on Saturday and you may not get the results until Monday. If they can do an in-house test, great, normally you can get the results within an hour. And if you are in a situation where you're using a stud dog that's somewhere else in the United States and that person's got to ship it to you, remember, that takes a day too. And most people, myself included, can't do much shipping on, on the weekend. So you've got to take that into account too as to when you get your first test done. But anyway, so we're back to our first test is here. And, and what we're looking for is we're looking for a sub one test. So we want to, excuse me, a, a, an above one test. So that's a meaningful number, and it gives us an idea that if we are getting a level here of around a one, so this level here is around a one, then we can expect to be breeding that dog in around six or seven days. That's about the, about the length of time that we expect, because we're breeding on a 15, which is right here. That's 15, which is somewhere between 11 and 15, 11, 11, day 11 and 13. So that is about, that there is about, you know, seven, five or six days, five to six days before we're probably breeding. That gives us enough time that we can get a result that means something. So first test, about day six. When, so now the question gets to be is when do you do your next test? Well, you don't know the answer to that until you've got the first test. So I'm always asked, oh, I've got, you know, I'm going to do my first test of day six. When do I do my second test? We don't know. 
We don't know. We expect you're going to do your set next test in about four days, but we don't know. We've got to see what this number is here. So let's play a game as to what we think the numbers are. Let's say that this is day one. And we've got first signs of blood here. And then day two, day three, day four, day five, day six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Right, so we're gonna talk about what happens here. So we're gonna do a test, first test, on day six, and we came back with a number of one. That's our progesterone level. Well, based on a level of one, and, and, and here's the other piece of the equation, here, here's the, I'm going to, we already have board space here. Um, here's what I do. I say that, and this works pretty reliably. When you've got a level of one, it goes up about one point every day until it gets to a level of five. So there's, there's day six, then it's a level of two on day seven, it's a level of three on day eight, it's a level of four on day nine, it's a level of five on day 10. So it's gone up one point every day till it gets to a level of five, and then it approximately doubles every, every day thereafter. So if we continue to do progesterone tests on this dog, we'd expect to see a two, a three, a four, and a five. That's what we'd expect to see if we did progesterone tests. And a level of five is ovulation, and we need to be breeding approximately two days after ovulation because the eggs have to mature before they can be fertilized. So remember, it said it about doubles every day. Well, it would be actually be about an eight the next day, and it would be a, a 15 the day after that. And that's when we want to do our AI, right there. And the day after that, again, it's about doubling. It's going to be about a 22. And that, by the way, is what we do on a surgical or a TCI. Surgical AI is a high number. Why is it a high number to do a surgical AI or a transcervical insemination? Because the semen does not have to migrate all the way up the vaginal canal to get to the eggs. And that takes about a day. So you do a surgical on a higher number. So, so I hope this makes some sense here. I'm about done with this, but we're gonna, we're gonna get this off the board here a second. There's a lot of information here. But basically, we are doing a surgical, a, we're doing an, an insemination on a level of 15, this is regular AI, or the next day after that, it's gonna be around the 22, which is for a surgical the next day. See how quickly it goes up. Um, right, I'm now gonna take this off the board. Give us a small one. So we're just gonna put some rough guidelines, I think, on the, on the page here as to what the heck we're talking about. So here's, here's, the, rule, here's the rules that I apply. Day one, first blood. That's what I'm gonna ask you. If you're talking to me, I'm gonna say, when did you see first blood? And when you give me that date, I'm gonna say, right, that's day one. Then I'm gonna say, do your first test on day six. Then I'm gonna say, when will the next test be? Well, when we get to, a, when we find out what that number is, that number, so when we see that number, take that number and add four days to it. So if, if you are, excuse me, take that number and subtract it from five, and that's the number of days for your next test. So if this is a one, then test four days later. So that's day six, day seven, day eight, day nine. And I'm saying that that would be, so if you've got level one, subtract four, so subtract, uh, excuse me, add four days. <laughs> Sorry, I'm confused. <laughs> What's that confused? I'm making up these rules because they're in my head and I've got to explain them to you so that they're, they're useful to you. Um, what I'm saying here is when it, whatever this number is, subtract that from five and that's the number of days for the test. So if you have a level of one minus five, that would be four days to do your test. If it comes back as a level of two, then that would be three days to do your test. If it comes back with a level of three, then that would be two days to do your next test. If it comes back as a five, breed, you know where you are, you're at ovulation, breed two days later. I think that's what I'm trying to tell you, right? So do your first test, subtract that number that you get back for that from test from five, and that's the number of days for your next test. And that will give you a good guideline. What we don't want to do, is we don't want to be in a situation where 
you do your first test and it's like at a 17 and you've got to ship semen for the next day, that gets to be a problem. If it is, you better be doing surgical AI and you can probably get away with it. But the point here is, is that you don't want to do your first test too late because you're going to be caught with your pants down you're not going to get a good pregnancy. And you certainly don't want to do it, do, do it way early unless you've got lots of money because you're basically just giving the vet money at that point. So I think just to sum things up for you, day one, first sign of blood, do your first progesterone test at day six. Take that number that you get from that, subtract that number from five, and that's the number of days for your next test. We're trying to find out when we're either a five, an eight, or a 15. Those are the numbers we're looking for. If we're a five, we're gonna breed in two days because that's ovulation. If we're an eight, we breed the next day. And if we're at a 15, we breed now, or if it's a surgical, we do it the next day. So those are the, that's what we're, this is what we're looking for. Those numbers there. Now look, if it comes back as a 6.2, it's not gonna come back as a five, right? You know that, right? It's not, it's not gonna come back dead on a five. It's gonna come back as some number that's in that range. So what does it mean? Well look, if it comes back as a 10, look, we're half a day out. That's what that means. If it comes back as a six, we're like half a day out. You can adjust these a little bit because they're not gonna be perfect. We, and, it, and, it, and also, the actual day that you AI, the accuracy on that is plus or minus a day. So, if you breed exactly on a 15 and instead you bred on a 12 or you bred on an 18, that's fine, that's not a problem. You're gonna get the same results. We don't have to be bang on 15. We just gotta be in the range. And that is also a reason why I recommend that you breed twice, two days apart. So if I was breeding this dog here, and let's say the next day it was a 23, 22, what I would like to do is I'd like to breed this dog at the first time here and the second time here and breed twice. That's what I'd like to do. Gives me a better coverage, better coverage on the whole thing. So, you know, if you are not going to do progesterone tests at all, I recommend that you breed three times. And what you do then is, is that you wait till the dog's discharge becomes pink or clear. And you start breeding. And then you breed every other day for three days. And typically this is going to be something around day nine. So you're starting your breeding at 11. 13 and day 15. That would be good. That would be good. And you could scoot this around. You know, this may change. You might be breeding on day 8, day 10, and day 12. That would probably be fine. Just, if you're just going to do it just off, off the way the dog's behaving and, and the color of the discharge without doing progesterone tests, do three, two days apart. If you're doing on progesterone tests, I recommend that you do, you, uh, uh, you do two, two days apart. If you're going to do a surgical AI, typically you do that one time and then you want to get your numbers closer. All right, I think I've talked long enough about this. I hope that wasn't too confusing. Um, but it is very important to get the progesterone levels right if you're gonna have a successful breeding. And it's also important that you get it right so that you're not spending a ton of money up front getting frustrated. Um, one last thing, let's just talk about split heats for a moment. This is another thing that can happen to you, split heats. So split heat is where a dog's progesterone level starts to rise and then it kind of stalls out and does something for a little bit and then it goes up. And so they've got this period here of a few days to a week, maybe 10 days, where the dog's really not giving you, the numbers aren't really changing very much at all. This happens in young dogs. This happens in dogs that are between a year and a year and a half old. They are the harder dogs to get pregnant because of what's called a split heat. Their whole hormone engine has not got smoothed out, it's not running very well. It's like an engine with got a bad spark plug, it's kind of skipping the beat. And so with split heats, they can be confusing because you can get numbers that look like they're doing something, you've got blood, but the numbers are still low. That's a split heat. And the problem with the split heat is, is that once you get to the point where the, the, this kind of roughness is smoothed out and it starts to rise, it can go up pretty quickly. You can get caught with your pants down. So be careful about split heats. Typically, those are younger dogs that are between a year and a year and a half old. Where well, you see that. Okay, I think that's it. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like what we're doing, we would really like if you subscribe to us. It helps us out. Um, if you've got other topics that you'd like us to include, let us know about that. If you think we've missed things, let us know about that too. Comments are always welcome, both positive and negative. And uh, remember, the most important thing is be good to your doggies. Bye, everybody.